Today is my sharing. Today is my sharing. Uh, it's on our vision. How it all come about is, a few weeks ago, our brother Danny passionately told me, hey, we all keep talking about the vision. Did we share this vision and explain it? I actually took it and I thought to myself, yeah, it's a good idea. But I have no conviction though. I was saying, God, if you want me to speak on this vision and explain the vision again, although we have been remembering our vision, so I said, you have to show me. A few weeks ago, during the prayer meeting, God spoke. You share it. And the song, Stand Up For Jesus, was singing. So I was convicted to share this and explain the vision God has given to our church. But it's still not enough. The next day, Pastor Teresa was also mentioning it, say about, oh, we need to talk about it because of Brother Daniel. I still got convicted. But still not very convicted. Until a few days ago, I had this dream. I realized Although I was preparing, I realized I really have to share this. Pastor Teresa and I was in the dream and we were saying, must share, we are passionate talking about it. Brother Danny's picture came into the dream. I realized God has put Brother Danny and telling us we need to expound our vision. Why do we have this vision from NCLC? That was maybe 10 years, 11 years ago and all of us were in the leaders and Pastor Richard Sim in those days too came and joined us in a one day seminar and we prayed and the vision was given and was crafted. We all have just said about the vision, we talk about it, to proclaim Jesus Christ and his perfect work of salvation, transforming lives, transforming nations. Wow, it's a, I've spoken to many. And people have also told me it's in the in the church circles and even the pastors, they say your vision is very profound, very good. And that's it. We thought, oh, everybody talk about it, everyone will know about it. Then when God challenges me to say, hey, did any one of you here really understand what the vision stands for? Although we keep repeating in our spirit. So today, I'll try with the grace of God, which is anointing to share with you what he has put it into the heart of the elders and why this vision, how is this vision impact our lives and your lives, those who come and worship here. And in fact, he will transform all of us out to share the gospel. Before we even start, he said, we proclaim Jesus Christ. Who is Jesus Christ? All the believers here will know who is Jesus Christ. Yeah, Jesus Christ. But if you talk to the non-believers, they will tell you Jesus Christ. Some will say he's a prophet. Some will say he's a man. If you go and talk to the Jews, they say Jesus Christ is only the son. You know. But we believe Jesus Christ is God, right? We also know that he is God. The Buddhists will tell you, yeah, he's just a prophet, man. Seems like, seem like any other God. But today I want to challenge you, who is this Jesus Christ? Why do, people, why do we have to proclaim Jesus Christ and his perfect work of salvation? Then it transform our lives and then it will transform nation. Let me, in order to really let you understand, we really need to know how, what, do we always say that why do we say Jesus Christ is God? Because let's look at those scriptures. And today I will show you scriptures to demonstrate to you that Jesus is God. John chapter 17 verse 3, quoting from all my scriptures today is New King James Version. And he said, this is eternal life that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. When you know Jesus Christ, when you believe him, he gives you eternal life. This is eternal life. The only God, true God, that's Jesus Christ. 
Then John 14, 6 say, Jesus said to him, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to me, comes to the Father except through me. No one comes to the Father, Father God, except to Jesus Christ. I remember this very well. About 20 odd years ago, I got a client, 86 years old, and she's very religious, and she's uh, going worship in a Catholic church. And she said, hey, Jim, uh, we always pray to Mary. I said, yeah, but we pray to Jesus Christ. She asked, challenged me to show her the scripture, and I show her this scripture. I said, Jesus said to him, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except to him. To me, he said. She got convicted. She was tearing. She really then com committed to Jesus. And a few weeks later, she brought, she, I remember she brought a reverend. He said, I told my father in my church that you are my accountant, but you share with me this. And today I want to bring my father here, my brother here, because he's sick. Because you told me that Jesus healed. So can you pray for him? I still remember that. At that time, my wife was very uh, a Catholic. So I was very frightened, you know, praying for a padre, which I did. So I just tell you, when you have Jesus, you believe in him, that he is the eternal life, that he will answer your prayer. That is the vision that we say we proclaim Jesus Christ. Now, people will tell you, oh, Jesus Christ. What does a Christ just mean in the Jewish They'll say it's a Messiah in the Hebrew language. They, they call Jesus Christ, they call a Messiah. But in the New Testament, we say in the Greek language, they call him Christ. So let us look at the scriptures again. John 1, 41 say, He first found his own brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated the Christ. The Messiah is in the Hebrew language, but Christ is a Greek language. So, brothers and sisters, I will tell you again, again in Matthew 16, 26, the scripture said, Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. That's the reason why we proclaim Jesus Christ, right? He is the living God, Son of the living God. He he is the Christ. Well, you will look to, there are two prophecies that prove Jesus is the Messiah. Okay? One, I have to read it in Micah, in the Old Testament, chapter 5, verse 2. But you, Bethlehem, Afrata, to, though you are little among thousands of Judah, Judah, yet out of you shall come forth to me the one to be a ruler in Israel, Who's going forth are from all from everlasting. Way back thousands of years ago, Micah is already prophesied that there's a Messiah coming from the tribe of Judah. And you traced Jesus is from the tribe of Judah. In the book of Daniel, again the prophecy. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the command to restore and build Jerusalem until Messiah the Prince, there shall be seven weeks and 62 weeks. The street shall be built again and the wall even in troublesome times. I just want to explain to you that, oh, these two prophecies have really demonstrated to you even in the Old Testament that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. But I will tell you that how do we affirm that Jesus Christ to show that we preach Jesus Christ is a true God. Even in when you're the baptism, from the baptism in Matthew 3, 16, 17, he said, when he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water. And behold, the heavens were opened up to him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting upon him. And there is a voice 
come from heaven saying, This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Right? During the baptism of Jesus by John the Baptist, there's a vision. You see, you know, a voice came out that this is my son. I'm well pleased. So it is to again prove to you that Jesus Christ is really the Son of God and is really God. Now, proving to you Jesus Christ is God, all of us here will know that, but how are you going to uh, answer the non-Christian friend? If you talk to the Muslim, they say, ah, Jesus is also, we read in the Quran, he's a prophet. If you talk to the Buddhist, they say, oh, every God is sin. Jesus, we don't mention his son. But they always differentiate between the son and the father. But when you understand and believe in the Bible, coming from the word of God, the Bible is the word of God, and we all believers believe that it's the holy book. They say, Father, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. This is a trinity. We believe all three together is God. So we have to be able to talk to your friends when they challenge you. Ha, ah, Jesus is only a man. He was born like us, and he was a man. How can we say it's God? He's a prophet. But we know in our scriptures that when God ascended to heaven, when Jesus ascended to heaven, right, he's sitting on the right hand of the Father. And he already said to you, they give you the Holy Spirit. So right now, we have the Holy Spirit inside here, in here when you believe. Because we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. So you are guided by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is one of the, is the Trinity which God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So we must know and we must be convicted and convinced in our spirit that Jesus Christ is the only true God. That's what the scriptures say. If you believe the scripture, you believe him, you must believe that the scriptures is the Holy Bible, that's the word of God. We believers always use the word of God. And many times I've heard stories, even I have come across, that sometimes the word of God will come out like one soul thick and so large in the small word. Many have so, so given, spoken to me, hey, how come when I read my Bible verse, sometimes the word just jump up and it's such a big, instead of small sentences, of small words, it's so big. So this work of the Holy Spirit. Many have experienced, I've heard it too. I have also experienced myself. So the word of God really, really, shows you that Jesus Christ is the only God who gives us salvation. Now, in the second part of our vision, the first part is we proclaim Jesus Christ. The second part is, and his perfect work of salvation. What do you mean that perfect work of salvation here means? What does it really mean? But if you look at the early tabernacle, I want to share with you here. So this, this one here is uh, graphic. You can see here, this is a temple. You go in. Inside here is where the normal priestly, they come in and pray, and the priest will do the normal, normal time. But once a year, you see the curtain here? It's a holies of holies. Once a year, the priest will go in here to pray to God and to ask forgiveness from God for the sins that the people have committed. And the priest will go in there once a year. And you'll be, and you'll be surprised, I'll show you this, that the priest that goes in here, you see there's rope? Now, you, you can read in the scriptures and uh, some of the uh, people write that the, the rope is actually, okay, sorry, the rope is actually tied around the waist, and and also is some say is the anchor, right? This one, this one here is a picture showing the rope and the anchor. 
But on here, all the frills here, they got bells. So once a year, the priest will go into the holies of holies here to pray and ask God to forgive the sins of the people. Or they will, of course, they have of those animal sacrifices of blood and all these, these the priest will once sacrifice and go inside here. And they are worried that if the priest is, was then uh, not clean or got sin, can be zapped to death. That's the reason why they have these bells around here. And if no noise, they, they might feel that the priest has been slain. So they have to put nobody there to go inside there. So they'll use a rope and pull him out to the second chamber here. So you must realize that this is the earthly temple, tabernacle, before uh, this before Jesus came. Now, in here, in the earthly service, I, it's a bit long, but I think maybe it's good to read a little bit to understand what is the Old Testament, uh, the, 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 the worship to God was then. Now, when these things had been prepared, the priest always went in the first part of the tabernacle, performing the services, but in the second part, the high priest went alone once a year, not without blood, which he offered for himself and for the people's sins committed in ignorance. The Holy Spirit indicating this, that the way to the holiest of all was not yet made manifest while the first tabernacle was still standing. It was symbolic for the present time in which both gifts and sacrifices are offered, which cannot make him who performed the service perfect in regard to the conscience, concerned only with foods and drink, various washings and fresh ordinances imposed upon the time of reformation. So, you know very well in the Old Testament, in the old, during the olden days, that when they want to go to the temple, they have to sacrifice, you know, they still have blood, they have to wash their feet, they have, the priests will pray for them. That is the, before Jesus was came in to the picture. Now what about the heavenly tabernacle? Let me read the heavenly tabernacle. In Hebrew 9, verse 11 to 15. But Christ came as high priest of the good things to come, with a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands. That is, not of this creation. Not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood. He entered the most holy place once for all, having obtained eternal redemption. Even if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of Haifa sprinkling the unclean, sanctifies the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offer himself without spot to God, cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. And for this reason, he is the mediator of the new covenant by means of death, for the redemption of transgression and the first covenant, that those who are called may receive the promise of eternal inheritance. Now, as you all know, that when we receive Christ, we have eternal salvation. We know when we depart from this earth, we will be staying in heaven forever with Jesus. Hebrews 5, 9 to 10, in, say, in having been perfected, he became the author of eternal salvation to all who be, obey him, called by God as high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. Church, when you receive Christ, you believe in him, and you accept him in your spirit, you now have eternal salvation. He promised you. Right? He's perfected. But in the Old Testament, the, when Jesus was not there yet, the, the priest was the one who is doing, uh, praying for you and getting, and ask God to forgive your sin, the high priest. But right now, when you receive Jesus Christ, you don't need any more people to pray for you, you can pray direct to him. He is your mediator. Now let me tell you, 
this is very important. I don't know whether you can see it clearly. When Jesus was crucified on a cross in Calvary, the curtain was torn. Let's read this in Mark chapter 15, verse 38, 39. Then the veil of temple was torn in two from top to bottom. So when the centurion who stood opposite him saw that, he cried out like this and breathed his last. He said, truly this man was the son of God. Even the centurion, a Roman soldier, have said this. Truly the man was the son of God. Now I want to ask you this question. Why do you think the veil was torn when Jesus died? When Jesus died, it was really at the Passover. He separated the Passover. When he, breath, when he breathed his last breath, the God tore the veil down. It symbolizes that now we do not need a priest to say, to go and ask God to forgive your sin. It symbolizes that now we can go direct to Him. Today, in this new covenant, you and I can go direct to Jesus Christ our Lord. If you have done anything wrong, if you feel that you have sinned, you only just have to go to Him and repent and say sorry. Because in 1 John 1 9, it stated, com you know, as you, when you confess your sin, right, you'll be, and you'll be forgiven, you'll be cleansed. So, therefore, now you do not have to worry. You don't need to come to the pastors or the elders, oh, pray, pray for me. I'm, I am, uh, have sinned. Can you pray for me? Yes, we can pray for you. But you, can go and repent yourself. You can go and ask God to forgive your sins because now you receive Him, you are really a child of God. So we have a direct connection to God. You don't need to ask the Pastor Teresa, I've seen, uh, can you pray for me? Yes, she can pray for you, but you can pray yourself. You say, God, I'm sinful. I, I confess and repent of my sin. And you sincerely say that you're forgiven because now you have Jesus in heaven. He's your God. I want you to know that. That's the reason why the elders chose, was convicted to have this vision for NCLC about maybe 12, 13 years ago. We all gathered together, and a group of us, and we all come out with different things and we pray and we peace together and this is well, this is the why we came out with we proclaim Jesus Christ that we know that he is God I've, I've proven to you through the word of God and his perfect work of salvation what do you mean by perfect work of salvation I just explained to you you can go direct to him now you do not need to ask the priests like the oh, in the Old Testament to ask them to pray and ask God forgiveness you can go direct and ask for forgiveness. And God will forgive you. Now that's how his perfect work of salvation. But more importantly, after you receive Christ, after the favor, what, why do we say transform your lives and then in transformation? And that's why Brother Danny challenges us. You know. Again, I have to pray through and again, you have to come up with scriptures to tell you that that's how, when you believe God, the Lord Jesus Christ as a God, as your Savior, as your King, then where is all come from? We really need to read the scripture in the New Testament. Galatians 2 20 say, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh. I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Okay, church, when you believe in Christ, you are crucified with him. You die with him. It is no longer you who live, but Christ who lives in you. In you. If you are Christ in you, if God is in you, the Holy Spirit is in you, 
so you behave like him. Your, 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 all your bad attitudes will be start changing. All your opinionated ideas, sometimes it's so fleshy, it will slowly go away. As if you keep reading his word, if you pray to him, if you fellowship with your brother and sister, you worship him, I guarantee you, he will change. Now, you transform your lives. Uh. Let's look at some of the other scripture. Romans 8, 13, 14. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you will put to death, the deeds of the body you will live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. God is telling His children, if you live according to your flesh, according to what you think you should do, or this, this is the way I want to do it. But if you choose to live by God's word and by the, by the Holy Spirit inside you, and God, the Holy Spirit might tell you to do not, nothing. I'll give you an example. I'm not saying anything, just an example, okay? Parents. All the time we parents want to look after our children. All the time we are thinking good things for the children. All the time we want them to follow the right thing. But if children do something, we will try to say, no, no, no. We will try to impose our will upon the children. I have to take notice sometimes, no, Bill and I. I really start thinking, how can we impact the lives of the, the children? Oh, well, they'll follow us for sure if, we, if the girl, if they, will, they will try to copy you. But how can we become better parents? Not putting our opinion on, on, on them. They are also human. Pray that God will give them direction that can reconcile with our, our thinking. Through our experience, they learn from us. But sometimes our own thinking might think that it's better for them. But maybe God has other ideas. Can we pray to God, ask God, some direction and how to relate to your children. I'll tell you an example. I was just sharing with my wife just now. I feel so unhappy that day in my spirit. And when my daughter flared up with saying something, I think I said, What? Why have I to be subjected to this thing? Then I start thinking to myself, Huh, maybe we have given them the impression that maybe I was like that. Right? And now they are also using it, uh, copying us, our actions, our opinion. So I believe fathers and mothers, potential fathers and mothers, when you want to raise up your kid in a godly environment, we pray to God to give a direction. Not use our own opinionated self sometimes to put it on the pressure on the children. The children need guidance, but it must be godly guidance. I stand here to tell you, I have failed many times as a father because I think that what I think should do should be right. But it, will, it is only my way of thinking. But is that according to the way of God, according to the word of God? I post it to you because our brother Danny challenged me. Now you talk only your vision, right? But how do you transform lives? There you are. Transforming lives is Jesus who transforms you. Using his word of God, talk to him, he changed you. He changed your opinion. I do according to him. If you are wa want to be following the true word of God, you want to follow Jesus, then you know when you do that, you you can see slowly you are changing. Again, the only things that I have to talk to is through the word of God. Like in Second Corinthians 3.18, But we all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed in the same image, from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. When God transforms you, you have His glory.
Romans 12, 2 is my, one of my favorite verses. They say, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what that is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. If you have Jesus in you, if you believe his word, you speak to him, he'll transform you. He'll transform your thinking. He'll transform some of your fleshy thinking. God never say in his Bible, you cannot be rich. Nowhere. If we read, he say, so rich. What he meant, I believe, is when you are in line with his word, he enriches you in many ways. Physically, he gives you good health. Materially, he gives you good businesses. Spiritually, he gives you life. If you have all this, he enriches you, he prosper you. I know of many pastors talking about, oh, if you believe this, you pray this, and you, you believe that your money in the bank, you'll be there. It happened, but what is the intention? When God gives you monetary finance, what does he want you to do? Is that to keep you for yourself all the time, to feed your family, to do for self-indulgence? Or he has a, another purpose for you. I always come back to this guy that I read many, many times, Rockefeller. When he was young, his father died, his mother was a Baptist. When he got a first job as a boy, he gave his mother so happily one dollar something. The mother said, come here, son. He said, out of this, I'll take 10% now and put it aside. He said, so that you know that this is to do God's work. The rest, you know, you can save and do. And I remember his words. He said, if my mom did not teach me how to tie to the Lord, I would not be able to tie millions when I have so much money. I will be very, very hurt full in my spirit if I say, oh, I have to type millions when I make so much money. But because the mother taught him that tithing is a worship to the Lord and he uses 10%. And for then, you can see today Rockefeller Center. You know, if you, you can read his life's history, how God blessed him. But he also do God's work, okay? So remember, Brothers and sisters, God prosper you in many ways. Prosper in your life, prosper in your work, prosper in your business, prosper in your relationship, prosper also in you serving the Lord. I really like what Galatians said to chapter 5, verse 22, 26 in the New King James Version. Now I plead with you, brother, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing, that there be no division among you, but that you may perfectly join together in the same mind and the same judgment. He's asking us, God is asking us, hey, be united. And we are in church. We are united in what God wants us to do. He asks us not to have division. He asks us to be in, un uni in unity. Whatever the pastor say, he has really ever really prayed for, and if the pastor say this, as she opened her mouth just now, I think it's prophetic, that he, she wish that one day she can have a charter plane full of us to go mission. And I can tell you right now, that is one of the vision of this church, that we are the mission by the church. Right? That, why do we have to go to mission? Because God has transformed you. God wants you to preach the gospel. His main function for all of us is to share the good news in and out of season. Don't tell me, oh, I'm too, not the right time to share. But God said, share my message in and out of season. And I'll take Pastor Teresa's word seriously that she here would charter a plane, she said, that we get all together. So, if she call us one day, now we are, we are going to a mission trip and we have 100 people here, Right? We go in the charter plane, so be it. And all of you must think that, hey, we all go there for what? We go to mission is to share good news of the Lord Jesus Christ. When you are in a mission trip, 
mission field, you know, many of you have been to mission field. Miraculous thing happened. Blind people can see. People who cannot give birth, give birth. The next day, you ask baby sister, India, they pray for people, all oh, the women, not pregnant, they all wanted children. Next year, she went by and they all got babies. So, you must remember when you go to mission field, you are Jesus in you. You will say the word you can perform. You ask Pastor Lam in, and his wife in Vietnam, what miraculous thing will happen? You never, you say, how come it not happen here? But here is because we are so lazy fair, we are so contented. But over there, there in the poorer countries, they don't have money to see doctors. If you have come to our session with Dr. Sim last Wednesday, last Wednesday he said that when he went in to a, 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 a church, a, a kampong, he called it Tungku Kampong, Kampong, Kampong Tungku. He said, he doesn't know why. And, 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 the, and the head man wives and the head man told him, oh, my wife is not here because my wife is sick. Pray. He said, huh. So what he did? He said, nothing. Lah. He just prayed. Okay, pray for the wife to be healed. And the wife was not there, right? Next morning, the wife was serving breakfast to them. He asked him, what happened? He said, oh, she's healed. For, for a few days, she cannot go. Well, no doctors around there. She was sick. So that changed. He told us, uh, that changed his mind about God. Because his old theology, he thinks he was taught that healing is finished already when Jesus Christ has been crucified. But that changed his theology that says that Jesus still heals today. Still heals today. That you see so miracle. So for our pastor who is being trained to be in theology, in the, in theology and in the in their belief, healing has already stopped. But he changed his mind. He said he spoke in tongues. Right? So again, I'm telling you, our God is a true and living God. Because only you want to believe or not. You talk to many of you, you can hear what they say, oh, God answer my prayer. In many ways, you ask them, God will give me this, and they, I pray it happen. Whether it's a small little thing, God doesn't care whether it's big or small thing. But you believe, it will happen. You can see so many miraculous healing in our church. I believe I miraculously heal from cancer, prostate cancer. All of you, many of you got here. Suchi recently is miraculous heal. You will talk to Suchi. You say that she has a, the doctor will give her a limited time. Look at her today. You think God uses for what? I'm using her is because of course I'm pretty sure God got a purpose in her life. Or all of us. So therefore we must know that our Lord is really, really, really alive. Now let's say, look at Galatians 5, 11 to 25. But the fruit of the Spirit is what? Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with his its passions and desire. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. God is telling you, every one of you, will have, if you have that, you have this, the Holy Spirit in you, you will have that. Have all the gifts. Do you want all the gifts? You have all this. It display Jesus Christ character in you. That's important. He asks us not to envy one another. Humanly, sometimes we envy, oh, how come that guy is better than me? Eh? How come he's richer than me? Eh? There's no comparison in God's eye. You are his son and your daughter. You are favorite in your eyes. You are the apple of his eyes. So believe that. What is good for you, he'll give it to you. I will tell you, I can tell you many stories that the goodness of God, that Touches lives, touches my life, my family life, and all of you. Everyone got stories. So believe that Jesus Christ 
when you have him, he really transforms your life. But that's not enough. He wants you to take it out as well, right? Colossians 3, Therefore put to death your members which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. When you have him, he wants you to die to self. He wants you to take away all those rotten things in your system. If you believe and you keep reading his word, you keep talking to him, keep praying to him slowly, he will change you. All your enviness will go. All your jealousy will go. All the things will come. You become more generous. You become more like him, like what he wants you to be. And then you'll be transformed. Now, I ask Selfie to show me a picture of a caterpillar transforming into a butterfly. I'll tell you that we are like a caterpillar. We are like here. When we, when we, when, when we do not know him, after we know him, we're still like that. But slowly as we read his word, we talk to him, we can be transformed like a beautiful butterfly. And he wants you to be a beautiful butterfly. For you to go and touch lives. Why do you think he wants us to transform nation? First of all, transform your lives first in the local community. Like Pastor Teresa said, when, they, when, when Selvi comes and asks you to do something which they are planning for the community, I pray of us to put up a hand and say, I want to be part of this team to go and touch lives in the community. Because we started this church and we said we are based here for the community around us. And we really mean it. Right. So there are many people around here, especially at this time, COVID-19, out of jobs, right? going through difficult times. And I think we are planted here for a purpose. We need to touch the community. I really, really pray that when Pastor Teresa say, uh, we are going to start this among the community, this work, I pray that all of you will put up your hand and come together with her and the church to go and help and transform the community around here. Transform yourself first, then the community, then we can go overseas to do a mission where God is telling us, share the good news to everyone, irrespective of anything you are asked to share the good news. Very important. You open your mouth wherever you are. I do that whenever I have an opportunity. Yeah, sometimes I got knocked back. It doesn't bury me. I, I just pray and keep going. Many times people will come around. Many people will stay to please. Yeah, 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 I will do it, but they don't actually want it, right? But if you are persistent, you are putting your prayer, pray for the person, you see it's happening. I suggested one thing to my cell group two weeks ago. Every day, ask God to open doors for you to meet the one person that needs your help to pray. I challenge you, you will see it happening. I heard from Brother Danny and Sister Fiona saying, Hey, Jim, you asked me to pray. What? Immediately? We pray. And then I met somebody there to counsel or pray about. God will do His work, not you. If you prepare, if you really believe, God, I open the door for me today to meet someone that I can share the good news, to minister to people. I guarantee you, God will answer your prayer. But are you prepared to do it? That's my challenge to you. Right? You are now a beautiful butterfly. You are being clothed in God's love. You are already the sons and daughters of God. You have heard so many preaching. Sometimes you say, ah, I heard it before. But today I challenge you, do you really know who Jesus is? If you really know who Jesus is, Jesus is God in your heart, you will do the things that you will even surprise you. He will tell you not to think about what you can do on earth, what you think. He will make you challenge you to do the things what he wants you to do. God never say he doesn't bless your business. God will bless your business. God never say he doesn't want to make you a millionaire. He'll make you a millionaire. But what he wants you to do is with the money, with the action, what do you, what do you want you to use it for? 
you should know many story. People with billion dollars, high, they are very worried person. They always worried about what happened to them, what happened to the, the business or this. But we, as a believer in Christ, will be so steadfast in a belief in Christ that He is all, all in all. You do not have to worry about your sustenance. I was so happy this morning. I haven't asked his permission. Our brother Eddie, I spoke to him. He got a job in this COVID-19. He was a, he is a student here. He got a job with Real Tinder. Yes, we pray for him. But also through the belief in God, he also searched. How come Eddie is so special? Get it? Uh? What about other people who want to try, cannot get? Because I believe he's a son of God. He pray, and God answered his prayer. Right? So everybody, I challenge you, you pray, you believe in God will do his miraculous power on your life. Now I would like our sister Selvi, where, where is she? To come in now. Let me pray first before we go into the table. Lord, we want to thank you, Father, for this morning. Thank you, Lord, as we share the vision of NCLC. Lord, this is a vision you have given to the elders and the pastors. So we believe and trust in you that this vision will carry this church and its member to where you want it to be. We, want, we know, Lord, that you are our true and living God. We know that you are, Lord, that you are perfect salvation for us. When we believe in you, we now know we can go direct to you and ask you to forgive our sins and ask you to answer our prayer. You do it because you are Christ, our Lord. And Lord, in turn, Lord, with your words, with the prayer, with the fellowship of the brethren and sisters, we know, Lord, that you can inspire us and, you will, and our life will change because of the word, because the truth is in the word of the Lord, the Bible. And we believe and trust in this holy word. Lord, we want to thank you. We want to thank you.